Damn it, I told her to stay away from that punk. No! <laughs> I gotta go in. Later, baby. I'll wear you out. Do you mind? Kathleen, this isn't very smart. You know how your father feels about you and... Darren! Can't you even say it? Look, I'm out of here, Kat. I'll call you tomorrow. Not a good idea. My husband can make trouble for you. Your life will get complicated. Stay away from her. You're not my mother! Go upstairs. Do you want your father to come down here? Go upstairs. See you soon, Mother. Youth. Oh man, I thought white men couldn't jump. Yo, coach, you better bench yourself. Somebody want to get this man a cane? Cane? Yeah, better watch yourself, son. I'll take care of myself. Yo, where'd you get that hickey on your neck, huh? Would you buy that mail order? Because I know you are much too ugly to get that from a woman. Yeah. He's blushing. <laughs> All right, come on. Let's take it to him, get some points on the board. Run you for pinks, Lorenzo. Yeah, break your heart, Langford. Look, Chris, can I talk to you for a minute? Look, I, I'm kind of jammed up. I was due someplace 10 minutes ago. What's up? Cool. I'll talk to you later. Hey, D, if it's important, I got time. 
It'll keep. Thanks. I'll see you. Bye. George, relax. He's not that late. You want tuna or Swiss? Sorry? Sandwiches, George. Remember, we were working, we got hungry, I fixed sandwiches. Oh, tuna, please. Okay. <laughs> Sorry I've been a space ranger today. That's all right. You sweating this trial? I'd say we've got them both nailed down tight. This case is a dunker. I could phone it in. So then what is it? You talk to me. Is it marriage problems? Who told you? Well. I mean, how, how did you know? I mean, nobody knows. It... <laughs> you are so damn perceptive, Rita. <sighs> I figure you got work and you got your family. If it's not one, it's the other, right? You guys just had your 12th anniversary. I thought everything was going terrific. Yeah. Except I'm starting to feel like I'm living in one of these things. Safe, comfortable. All my needs met. But on the other side of the glass, there's a whole other world. Full of chances and gambles and excitement. Does any of this make any sense to you? You're thinking about having an affair. You read me like a book, Rita. You always have. Does that mean I'm a terrible person? Well, everybody fantasizes, George. It is just a fantasy, right? So far. I've uh, met someone. Well, I, I didn't just meet her. I've known her for a while. We work together. But lately, I've been seeing her in a new light. I get flutters in my stomach when we're together. Listen to me, I sound like a schoolboy with a crush. Does she feel the same way? I don't know. In a funny way, I hope she doesn't. Because if she does, we could both be drawn inexorably into an emotional quagmire. You two decent in there? Sorry, I'm late. Game went into OT. Did you win? What do you mean, did we win? Of course we won. I'm the coach. And the referee. Let me know when your next game is. I'll put a bet down. All right, come on, Donovan. Give me your worst. My testimony is unshakable. Let's uh, do this later, sometime early next week, after you have a chance to shower. No, well, come on. What are you talking about? Look. We already bit into our weekends. Let's get this over with. I tee off in a half hour. Uh, you're eating my sandwich. You're damn right I'm eating your sandwich. No, no, you enjoy. Rita, thanks for the use of the hall. I'll see you kids around the campus. See you, George. Wait a minute, I bust my buns to get over here and Donovan's got a tea time? Man, I could have hung out and talked to Darren. Darren, he's on your basketball team, the one that works on your car. That's the one, that's the one. He had something on his mind he wanted to rap about, but I blew him off to come over here. You no, know, Donovan, he, uh, he seemed a tad distracted. Guess my fish make him nervous. Tell me I'm the only one, Darren. Tell me you love me. I'm the only one. You're the only one. Make love to me. Get back here, you little... Uh-oh. I told you to stay away from my daughter, you scummy little punk. I'll kill you. No, Daddy, let her alone. No, Daddy, I don't want to hurt you, Mr. Carlson. <laughs> I'll kill you, you little punk!
Yo, Lorenzo. Hello. What who? Darren, is that you? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you been drinking, man? <laughs> yeah. Man, I have messed everything up. Oh, Darren, you didn't mess <sighs> anything up, right? Booze isn't gonna help, trust me on that, all right? Just talk to me and we'll walk through this together. I swear to God, man, one decent thing comes into my life. And I'm blowing it, Chris. I can't handle it anymore. All this sneaking around and lying. I can't give it up either. I got, I got the Jones bad. Look, you know, Darren, why don't you tell me where you are, and I'll come by, I'll pour some coffee down that three-point frame of yours, all right? Where you at? Look, I want to talk it with you, but it... <gasps> Not right now, I want to catch some Z's. Darren, when you decide you want to talk, all right, you call me anytime, any place, I'll be there. I'm on practice. I'm sorry I woke you up. Nice shot. Man. Hey, Paco. You seen Darren around, man? No, he got school today, coach. Anybody else? Anybody seen Darren? All right. All right, come on, shirts and skins. I want some hustle today. What's up? What, I win the football pool or something? Me and Keneally just got back from a DB call. Kid got himself shot. Found this in his billfold. Has your home number on the back. Figured maybe he knew you. Lorenzo. It's too bad. Kid can be more than 17. Look, look, there's got to be more than that. I'm telling you, that's all she wrote, Lorenzo. The uniforms found the kid lying in the street. Me and Keneally rode out there and wrote up the report. Gunshot wound to the chest fired by person or persons unknown. Okay, who's primary on it? Me. I don't see it closing. It's going to stay in red ink on the board unless we catch some major break. Well, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're going to walk on this? Bonner, a kid is dead. Probably drug related. Could be a gang thing. Or maybe he just cut the wrong guy off in traffic. Hey, why all the interest on your part? You and Lance are the red ball. High priority homicide hot shots. Why slum around with us bottom feeders? You're not gonna get your name in the newspaper on this one. Just trying to figure out what went wrong. I knew this kid. He was Lorenzo Snitch. That makes it real important. Hey, another punk got wasted. To me, it's an ecology killing. Thinning the herd. You watch your mouth, Bonner. He was a friend of mine, all right? What are you, nuts, Lorenzo? I want this case, Bonner. You got a problem with that? You got it, Hotshot. Just clear it with Lieutenant Hudson. Get the paperwork from Keneally. And while you're at it, you can kiss my Chris, ass. I'm sure that Detective Bonner has places to go. He knows where he can go. So what was that all about? If I ever get that cold hearted, shoot me and put me in my misery. Dan was a good kid. Wasn't some piece of garbage left in the street to be kicked back in the gutter. I know. His life meant something, Rita. So should his death. Gangs, Taryn didn't have anything to do with gang bangers. You know that. This is Langford. I'm not trying to upset you. I'm just, I'm trying to make some kind of sense out of what's happened. I know. I guess I'm still raw. Those two other cops, they were... Well, they didn't know, my boy. But you did. You know what kind of boy he was. Yes, I do. I don't want whoever did this to pay for it. Look, Mrs. Langford, anything you can tell me, uh, a list of his friends, anybody he might have hung out with, 
Do you know this girl? No, I haven't seen her. <laughs> but Darren was popular with the girls. Why? Why, Chris? Why would someone kill my boy? Why? <laughs> okay, okay, his car is right here, right front wheel up on the curb. Okay. Why? Oh, maybe he pulls in fast, he bails out. Maybe somebody's chasing him. He gets out of the car, he runs, and they shoot him. And he goes down right here. Right. Because right. he was shot in the chest. All right, now, if somebody's chasing him from behind, who's in front doing the shooting? So maybe they get their car up with his, all right? They force him right. over, then they pass him, and then somebody shoots him from here. All right, stand right here. Stand right there. OK, now, somebody forces me over to the curb, and I'm going to get out and make a run for it. Right. No way. This is, Darren was faster than I am, all right? Now, if somebody was chasing him, he would have gotten a lot farther before they could get in front of him. All right. Okay, new scenario. Darren sees something going down, right? He pulls over to help. He gets this far out of his car, and somebody pops it. Maybe. Or maybe Darren's not alone. There's somebody else in the car with him, like this mystery girl that nobody in his whole damn school seems to know, all right? So they get in an argument, she shoots him, Darren rams the curb, he staggers out. He goes down right here. It's even better. How many high school girls do you know that carry guns, though? We only need one. Hey, Vince. How you doing? Where's the Firebird? Right, Firebird right over there. Great, thanks. Okay. Man, Darren loved this car. You know that he rebuilt the engine in auto shop? Really? Wanted to buy it from him before I got the charger, but he wouldn't sell it to me. What is it with guys and cars? I mean, you're always complaining about yours. You're cussing at it, swearing at it. But you won't get rid of it. It's a classic. It's got soul. Yeah. We got a blood smear left underside of the steering wheel. We got another smear here on the door handle. Check this out. It's thick nape. It looks expensive. <clears throat> All right. Scenario gets another rewrite. Darren gets shot someplace else. He puts the washcloth against his chest and he tries to drive himself to the hospital, but. He starts to fade. He knows he's not going to make it. What about the phone booth? He's driving along. He's losing it. He sees the phone booth. He goes to call for help. He gets out of his car, and he collapses. And he rams the curb. The washcloth gets jammed in between the seats. That works. It does. I'm going to go talk to Dr. Weinstein see what her crystal ball conjures up. 32 caliber lead slug entered here. It ricocheted off a rib and did some major tissue damage before it lodged in the left lung. There was no exit wound. He died from internal bleeding. You know, that little slug made a slow leak. But can you give us a ballpark estimate on how long he lived after he was shot? Mm, no more than 10, 15 minutes max. 10, 15 minutes. So how far was the shooter from the victim? Close. There was gunpowder smudging around the wound. Virtually contact, no more than three inches. Up close and personal. Right. Yeah. Intimate, maybe. Semen traces indicate recent sexual activity. So we got violence and sex all in the same frame, making this a crime of passion. Burning the midnight oil? George, you didn't have to do this. They're, they're really lovely. You were there for me. I appreciate it. It's not a, a lot of people I can share my feelings with. It's not easy for me. Yeah, me either. Well, I guess if you ignore the feelings, they'll just go away, right? We got a lot in common. Uh, the rumor mill has it that Chris almost cleaned Bonner's clock in the parking lot today. What's wrong? I think you should talk to Chris about that. It's kind of personal. Ah. Oh. You don't want to betray his confidence. It's very like you, Rita. 
And that's where I feel safe to confide in you. I mean, to, to share my, my innermost thoughts and feelings. Hey, I've got uh, a 14-year-old bottle of scotch in my office. Buy you a drink, detective? I have to take a rain check. I should really wrap all this stuff up before it multiplies. Oh. Well, I won't keep you then. Good night. Did you ever talk to her? The woman that you were attracted to? Yes. And? I'm beginning to think the attraction may be mutual. Oh. Well. No feelings won't get you into any hassle, George. Acting on those feelings might. Be careful, right? I'll try. Night. I'm telling you, man, this chick was built like something out of some magazine or something. You ready, Weldon? Sergeant Lorenzo, this is my partner, Sergeant Lance. Hey, what? I ain't done nothing. We understand that Darren Langford worked here with you. Yeah, at Joe College? And me, I graduated last year. I heard Darren got dusted. That's whack. Either of you know this girl? <laughs> yeah. Darren knew her real good. A couple of times a week. Right down in the outlaw. Her daddy's boat. Her name's Kat. At least that's what he called her. What was her last name? <laughs> Trouble. You see, daddy caught him doing the wild thing aboard. He and the missus came down for a nooner. Find a bed already occupied. Man, it was rich. Daddy yelling, little Miss Hot Pants screaming. Darren shoved Daddy overboard. This happened recently? A couple of days ago. Daddy hollered that he was gonna kill Darren. You might want to check him out, huh? Garth Carlson. All his info is on file at the Harbor Master. Thanks, Eddie. No problem. Kathleen? Yes? We're police officers. We'd like to speak with you. What is it? Kathleen, you know Darren Langford? Is he in some kind of trouble? Whatever it is, my father's behind it. He hates Darren. Um, someone killed Darren. Killed? No, that can't be. This can't be happening. I loved him. I loved him. No! Darren was supposed to meet me after school, and he didn't make it. <laughs> that wasn't like him. He'd always call if he couldn't make it. But I, I thought he was afraid after the trouble with my father. Because of the fight aboard your yacht. Who are you, people? Police officers. You Mr. Carlson? Yes, I am. I, uh, I, I don't appreciate you barging in here like this. We didn't barge in. We're investigating the murder of Darren Langford. Murder? You can't believe my daughter has anything to do with this. We're questioning everybody who knew Darren at standard procedure. Well, I think before anyone gives any answers, I would like to call my lawyer. Darren is dead, Daddy. Are you happy now? He's never going to touch me again. Never make love to me. Kathleen, that's enough. We have two eyewitnesses that saw you threaten Darren Langford's life aboard your yacht. Now, we can talk about that here, or you can call your lawyer and have him meet us downtown. Your call. I spend 10 grand a year on her private school, so she meets the right kind of boys, and she gives herself to this punk. Now, you also say you didn't see Darren again after he pushed you in the water that Sunday afternoon. That's correct. And yes, I did say I would kill him. Haven't you ever said anything stupid in the heat of anger, detective? You own a 32 caliber pistol, sir? No. Kathleen's young, rebellious, 
angry so much of the time. I always thought this romance was her way of getting back at her father. And Jill? I'm cast as the evil stepmother, didn't Kathleen tell you? She doesn't give a damn what I think one way or another. You know what our big heart-to-heart mother-daughter conversation was? Condoms, the pill, or foam? Well, I used the pill, so of course she chose foam. Yeah, well, my mom was real big on abstinence. Hey, at least she was religious about using birth control. Doesn't that qualify as family values? Did your husband dislike all of Kathleen's boyfriends, or was it just Darren? There were no others. Darren was her first love. Did you ever hear Gar threaten Darren before the yacht incident? He never caught the kid in bed with his baby girl before. Does your husband own a 32 caliber pistol, Mrs. Carlson? No. Donovan, come on, seat, man. Oh, uh, yeah. Rita was just uh, briefing me on the Lopez case. Fascinating. No, the Langford case, George. Uh, whatever. Well, I uh, better get going. Oh, rain up there, Hopalong. Look, I know you've been briefed, but let me give you the skinny from the lab, all right? Now, we found carpet fibers on Darren's clothing, all right? Brand new carpet fibers. We also found a paint smear on his palm. Now, given the history between Garth Carlson and Darren, do we have enough reasonable cause to get a warrant to go in, search Carlson's place to try to find fibers and paint that'll match? Iffy. Even if the judge signs off and you get a fiber match, it's still weak. I mean, how much of that carpet's been sold in the Palm Beach area in the last six months to a year? Were the fibers in the wound proving he was there when he was shot? I mean, he could have been there earlier and been shot somewhere else. And as for the paint... All right, look, all right. You don't need to show off. Just tee the ball up properly for me, Lorenzo, then back off and let the big dog eat. <laughs> Lunch, next week. I'll even take you someplace with a foundation instead of four wheels. Sounds very tempting, George. Why don't you call me? Great. Lorenzo? See you, George. How long has Donovan had this thing for you? I mean, did it come on quickly like a virus or...? Oh, get out of here. Donovan has taken me to lunch lots of times. Yeah, and he always buys you roses. No, you know, trust me, Rita. Donovan doesn't want to take you to lunch. Donovan wants to have you for lunch. The testosterone is seeping through his suit. Oh, come on, Chris. I mean, he's, he's married, he's a family man, and he's... he's Donovan, you know. Okay. Look, Carlson has no history on the computer, correct? Kathleen was our number one contender. Maybe the spinning bottle stops on her again. Possible, but not the way that we figured. That there was a lover's quarrel after sex, which led to the shooting. Well, wait, no, what is this, another hunch? No, Weinstein said that Darren definitely had sex prior to his death. Right, but not with Kathleen. See, Valerie said that she was very careful about birth control. Kathleen used foam. Dr. Weinstein says that she found traces of semen, but no spermicide, meaning that Darren was having sex with somebody else. I couldn't watch you every minute of the day, so I hired someone who could, and, uh, and he took these. Oh, Garth. It's just a boy, though. Was just a boy. But look. Look how hungry you are for her. Look how you're going for her. You want a divorce? No. No. I want to see you like that. I want that part of you. I want to hear all about it. I want you to tell me everything that he did to you. Every single detail. God, that's so nasty. It makes me feel so dirty. Zach, what's up? Mm. Bummer about Darren, huh? You working the case? Yeah. Yeah, not much to go on so far. We, uh... Mm. Oh. You okay with it, man? Yeah, I went and saw his mom today. It helped some, but... It just doesn't make sense, man. You know, you know none whatever. No, it doesn't. So how was your trip back east? Everything cool with your pop? Yeah. I married some chick half his age. It's kind of weird, you know, it's like, she should be with me, you know, not with him. Zach, did Darren ever talk to you about Kathleen? 
I mean, everybody else around here, nobody's seen her or ever talked to her. But you and Darren, you guys were tight. Yeah, you know, he was always shady about it, you know, like, like he was guilty or something, always sneaking around, everything, this big secret, but, but yeah, you know, she lives up in those new condos by the marina. No, she lives behind the gates over on Wynwood Terrace. I must have moved them because, because he gave me a call one time to go over there and give him a jump, you know, I mean, his car was punk, wood and crank, and, uh, man. I got to look at her coach, and she was some fine work. Women her age are supposed to be wild. Kathleen is 17 years old. We're talking about two different slides here. I mean, the one I saw out there was, was way more than that. I know this is kind of technical, but we need to be certain. Now, Miss Carlson gave you permission to let people into her unit. That's right. She's having some remodeling done, and she's got workmen in and out all the time. Good. That establishes control so we can go in without a search warrant. Yeah. I'm no prude. I mean, what a person does sexually is her own business, but he was just a kid. And they met here a couple of times a week. And then earlier this week, Monday, I think, they got into a huge fight, screaming and everything. And we had neighbors complaining. Looks like we got a blood stain on the rug. Yeah, I bet you the washcloth that we found in Darren's car is going to match the set in the bathroom. There was also a palm print above the sink, which means he probably leaned against it while the paint was still wet. All right, let's get forensics in here to nail it down tight. Yeah. That's where Darren was shot. Valerie Carlson is going to go down for murder. Mrs. Carlson? Isn't this getting a bit tiresome, Detective? You're under arrest for suspicion of murder. That sounds like a joke. But I suppose it isn't. It's no joke. You have the right to remain silent. Those photographs don't prove anything. I keep telling you, you have no right. Read the search warrant, sir. I gave you a copy. Specifies the house, all the outbuildings, and the vehicles. She didn't kill him. I've never seen that before. I bet your wife has. I'm going to ask you one more time. Do you understand these rights as I've read them to you? Do I have the right to another drink? I found this in your car, Mrs. Carlson. Is this yours? Don't say anything until I can call Arthur. It's mine. I have it for protection. Bulkier than a condom and not nearly as useful, but Garth insists. Shut up, Val. This is very interesting. Look, I was having sex with him, but I didn't kill him. Mr. Carlson, you want to call your attorney and have him meet us downtown? You, you want to help Mrs. Carlson get some clothes on? Sure. Did you have sex with Darren Langford that afternoon? Yes, and I know that having sex with a minor is against the law, but I assure you it was consensual. I met him there at 2.30. Maybe it was closer to 3. Check with the private investigator my husband hired to follow me. He must have written it down when he wasn't playing with his long lens. Anyway, we made love as soon as he got there on the floor. He liked it that way. We made it again about a half hour later. You're shocked? No, not much shocks me, lady. I've been on this job too long, but your attitude makes me sick. This is all some perverted joke to you. To you, Darren's life doesn't mean anything. You used him. You used him like he was some cheap sex toy to get your bells rung. He was seven. What did the two of you argue about? We have statements from the neighbors that it was quite loud and violent. He fell in love with me. He said he wanted me to leave my husband, live some fantasy he dreamed up, the two of us living in my little condo happily ever after. He forced me to tell him how things really were. He didn't handle it very well. Well, that's not how it was. I talked to Darren the night before he died. He told me that he was blowing the only decent thing in his life. He said he was messing everything up, but he couldn't stop because it was like an addiction. You were that addiction, weren't you? He wasn't in love with you. He was in love with Kathleen. But you seduced him and wouldn't let go. That's what you fought about that day. He came over to tell you it was over, and you couldn't handle it. I didn't know this was personal, detective. You're damn right this is personal. 
Come on, George, you gotta be kidding me. You couldn't find a jury that would vote anything but guilty. Of manslaughter, yes. A first degree murder, no way. So what about the physical evidence? It all supports manslaughter, a crime of passion, which clearly is what it was. Now, my hunch is she's gonna plead out. I'll put the icing on it for me, just in case. Chris, you wanted to find the person who killed your friend. You did. It's a win. Now, the odds are she'll do time. Bull. She's gonna plead self-defense or she'll get some lawyer to run a scam and get her off. She'll end up with probation, George. That seem right to you? No. But you do what you can with what you got. Hi. George. Where's your partner in crime? Uh, he's, uh, he's meeting with Carlson's P.I. in some sleazy topless bar. <laughs> yeah. We had to flip a coin about seven times before he finally lost. So how are we doing with Valerie Carlson? She bailed out about an hour ago. We're charging with manslaughter, and so far her lawyer has no interest in being reasonable. I'm probably gonna have to go to trial. Hey, I was, uh, hoping to take you guys to Mulvaney's for a beer. Chris seemed pretty hot. Yeah. Well, you know how it is. I mean, it gets pretty frustrating. But uh, that's a really nice gesture. Uh, I'll tell him. We could uh, solo. I can't tonight. I, I promised Chris dinner. Ah. Well, then, I guess I'm out here. OK. Pat yourself on the back. You did good. George. Yeah? Uh, you remember the woman that you were telling me about, the one that you work with, that, that you had a little crush on? Is it me? <laughs> <laughs> you? Right, I, I'm secretly lusting after Rita Lance. <laughs> oh, no, I know, it's crazy, but Chris, well, you know, when you sent the roses and um, kind of been hanging out. You! <laughs> that's rich. No, I mean, that's really funny. I mean, I, I don't even find you that sexy. I, 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 mean, I mean, you're attractive, but I'm not attracted to you, for crying out loud. Well, thank you so much, George. You uh, know just what to say to a woman. So I'll talk to you later. Wait, 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 wait. Come on, you know, you know what I mean. I mean, I, I'm not trying to imply that you're... Uh, Lighten up, Chris. If you hadn't stepped up for Darren, he would have been written off as another random street killer. Man, this just doesn't feel right. Come here. <sighs> we gonna go through this again? <laughs> how flawed the system is and how the wheels of justice are going flat. I'm telling you, this is not random discontent, all right? This is bogus, this case. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, Valerie, right? She's so smart that she wipes her prints off the gun, but she is so stupid, she hangs on to it, even after we question her for the first time. I gotta admit, that's a little sideways. But maybe she thought we were so stupid that we wouldn't put the pieces together and come back again. Mm. You know? Possible. But see, there's another gap in the wire. The PI that was working for Carlson, he said that he followed Valerie back to her condo at 2.30, all right? She left again at 4.10, and he tailed her to the country club. She was on the court playing tennis by 4.30. Yeah, he even gave you the film report, so? So, Dr. Weinstein said that Darren bled to death no more than 15 minutes after being shot. Right? So let's say that Valerie shoots him uh, at 4 o'clock or a couple minutes after 4. Then he gets into his car, he drives three and a half miles, he gets out and he collapses. His body wasn't found until 5.35. And someone would have seen him lying there and they would have called it in. But no one did. So we got to assume that the cops found his body right after he died. Now, that was an hour and a half after Valerie left the condo. Damn. So somebody came in after her and shot him and then put the gun where we would find it. That's it. Garth, darling, come be with me. Hold me till I stop shaking.
He's asleep. He took one of his pills. <laughs> he won't wake up until morning. Your glass is empty. Kathleen, I know what I did was horrible, and I can't ask you to forgive me. But please don't hate me. I didn't mean to hurt you. Liar! You knew how much I loved him. And that's why you took him away from me. I didn't kill him. Yes, you did. Yes, you did! <laughs> So you be careful. Your partner, I no wonder you're working all the time. You got that right. You got that right. All right. All right. Come on. We got a big game today. Let's get our heads in this. All right. Now they're bigger than we are. We will still kick their butts. You got that? All right. Now what everybody the best is like basketball. Let's go. Come on. Come on. The game hasn't started yet, Georgia. The team is here. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that. No. Forget about it, George. It never happened, okay? The woman I was infatuated with? It was you. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, don't worry. I mean, everything's cool. It was like a, a fever or something, and, and now it's broken and everything's back to normal. It was fun for a while, though. I felt a little younger, a little thinner, a little... It was nice. Well, thanks for telling me, George. I mean, I really think it's kind of sweet. I don't suppose... Uh, I mean, you never felt... Uh... Nope. That's good. Because I'm deeply in love with my wife. She's a very lucky woman, George. 